When talking about Scandinavian countries, the obvious three nations of Norway, Sweden and Denmark always come to mind. But even when we think of the wider Nordic world, other nations come into mind like Finland, the further away Iceland and the even further away Greenland. However, one country that seems to get forgotten about when thinking of the world of snow and hats with horns on them, because Vikings definitely did have horns on their helmets, don't at me, is the country of the Faroe Islands, located north of Scotland. But I hear all those keyboards clicking away in the comments section because I said something clearly wrong. I don't hear you all saying that Vikings didn't have horns on their helmets because they did. Don't at me. It's the fact that I called the Faroe Islands a country when we all know it's actually a part of the Kingdom of Denmark. There's a couple reasons I said this. First off, so the title of this clickbait video would make sense. And secondly, because it kind of is its own country. Officially, it's an autonomous country within the Kingdom of Denmark. Along with Greenland and the mainland of Denmark that makes up the entire Kingdom of Denmark. This means that the Faroe Islands do have their own government, Logtig, but bigger issues like military and foreign relations are dealt with in Copenhagen. So, how did the islands that make up the Faroe Islands end up being a part of Denmark? At first glance on a map, you may think it would more likely be a part of Scotland due to where it is, much like the Shetland Islands. Well, it's actually thought that the first settlers on the island weren't from Denmark at all, but from Ireland, specifically Irish monks. It's believed that these first settlers came across the island thanks to St. Brendan when he left Ireland in search of the promised land of the saints. One story from his travels tells us of a visit to the islands of the sheep and the paradise of birds more on these sheep later. That was several days away of sailing from Scotland. The Faroe Islands are full of sheep, birds and are a few days away from Scotland on a sailboat, so it's very strongly believed that it was the Faroe Islands St. Brendan and his crew discovered. However, it wouldn't stay a haven for the Holy Irish. By the 9th century, Norwegian settlers came to the land, eventually leading to the Faroe Islands becoming a part of Norway. It was still a part of Norway when the kingdoms of Norway and Denmark came together to form a double monarchy in the late 14th century. Eventually, by by 1814 Norway was ceded to Sweden, but the Faroe Islands stayed under control of Denmark all the way up to today. The poor Faroe Islands have always been in the possession of other nations. Funnily enough, in 1524, King of Norway and Denmark Christian II was unable to pay a loan back to King Henry VIII of England. In compensation, he offered England, Iceland and the Faroe Islands, which they refused. Of course, these are the Faroe Islands, the islands being plural. There is more than just one island that makes up the Faroe Islands. Each of these islands with a name of their own. There's a lot of interesting stories behind the names of some of these islands. The biggest island is called Stremoy and this name means island of currents and the island to its east, Estoloi, simply means east island. What's also interesting is that some of the islands own pairs of names such as Kalsoi and Kunoi which mean man island and a woman island respectively and Stala Demon and Little Demon, which mean Great Demon and Little Demon respectively. However, we're here to look for the etymology of the collective name of all these islands, that name of course being the Faroe Islands. In Faroese, the name is Faria, with this name meaning Sheep Island. The name comes from Thor, which means sheep, and the old Faroese Oya, which means islands. If you couldn't gather from that name, the Faroe Islands have a lot of sheep. In fact, their sheep population is around 70,000, compared to the roughly 50,000 humans that live on the islands. Everyone could have their own personal sheep, plus an extra 20,000 sheep going spare. Some believe the name could also relate more to the original Irish settlers, coming from the Gaelic word Fjallan, which means a land or a state. Some think this name came to the Norwegian Norwegian settlers who added their Oya, meaning islands, becoming Firlan Olia and evolving into Faroe Islands in English, but I personally believe the more sheepish etymology. I mean, they even have a sheep on their coat of arms. The Faroe Islands was suggested by Danny over on Patreon, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as Name Explains Patron Saint of the Faroe Islands. If you want to become a Name Explained Patreon Saint, then why not support the channel on Patreon? Just a dollar and up earns you the chance to suggest a country or geographic location on the Wednesday Patron Saint Suggestions post for the next Patron Saint video. While you're here, don't forget to pre-order my upcoming book, The Origin of Names, Words and Everything in Between. It's a celebration of all things etymology and explains the names of things across a huge variety of topics. If you love the channel then you will love this book. Links to pre-order from Amazon will be down below. And of course, thank you to all my patrons. These Tuesday videos are able to exist solely because of all the awesome people who support Name Explained financially on Patreon. If you enjoy these videos and want to be a greater part of our Name Explained community, then why not support the channel? Just $2 a month gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you.